One of the fun new features of Photoshop Elements 13 is Photo Merge Compose found in the Enhance menu in the Expert mode. It allows you to cut an object or person from one image and add it to another image. So open the two images you want to use, the cutout image and the new background image. Here I'm going to cut out this tulip out of this image and place it over here in this arrangement because I feel like we need another red flower right here to balance out this arrangement. So make sure you're in expert mode and then also get the move tool and in tool options make sure show bounding box is checked. If it isn't checked, you won't have any way to resize your cutout later on because the transform tool doesn't work inside Photo Merge Compose as of this recording. I'm hoping Adobe will change that, but for now, just make sure Show Bounding Box is checked. In the menu bar, choose Enhance, Photo Merge, Photo Merge Compose. This feature does a great job of walking you through the process you're told to drag and drop the image you would like to extract something from to the instruction card. So I'm going to drag and drop this image right here with the tulip that I want to extract and then you'll just want to follow the instructions over here on the panel. You've already done step one, so step two is to create a selection outline with one of the selection methods and I usually start with the quick selection brush. So I'll click on that, it tells me what to do here, and I click OK. And then let's go ahead and close the photo bin, and I'll press Control-0 in Windows or Command-0 on a Mac to bring this up to full size. Then also you'll want to adjust your brush. You can make it bigger over here or use the right or left bracket keys to increase or decrease the size of your brush. Make sure you have Add selected over here, and then just begin to click and drag to select the tulip. Now here the stem is going to be a little bit slimmer so I'm pressing the left bracket key and I can click and drag along the stem. It's going to select a few things I don't want but I can press the Alt key in Windows, Option key on a Mac and click and drag and that puts a minus sign in the middle of that uh, brush and so that will subtract from it there. And then let's zoom in here, I'll get the zoom tool and zoom in. Press the spacebar to temporarily get the hand tool to move around. And then let's go ahead and get the quick selection brush again. I have a plus sign in there so that's good. I'm just going to click to add to my selection. We'll add a little bit more over here. There's one little part there. And I'm using the hand tool again. Now here I'll press the Alt key in Windows, Option key on a Mac to get the minus sign inside my brush and that lets me take away from the selection. So you can adjust it very easily if you want. About like that looks good. So now we're ready to refine the selection. Again I'll press Control or Command 0 to get back to full size. Click on Advanced Edge Refinement and then you'll want to click on Refine Edge. In the View menu, you can choose different backgrounds to suit your object. White works fine for this object, but if it was a really light object, I might want to use a different background. So we'll keep that one, and then I like to check Smart Radius. And move the Radius slider a little bit to the right, to around 2.5 or so. And then let's zoom in a little bit here so we can see this better. Notice the edge is just a little bit not, not quite as smooth as I would like it, so I like to use a smooth slider. And notice that just cleans that up nicely. I'm going to use somewhere around 20 for this particular image, and you may need to use a different value. And I'm not going to use feather or contrast. This will make the edge softer or harder. But I may shift the edge to the left to minus 2%, and that just brings it in a little bit and keeps some of the fringe stuff from happening um, on your cutout. So we're going to output to selection and click OK. Now you're ready to click the next button to place your selection on your other photo. Now just a note here, if the object doesn't move on to your other image but you get this screen right here or this panel, 
um, you might need to click the back button and then press next again. I've had that happen just a few times, but it always moves the second time I try. To resize the cutout and maintain the original proportions, click and drag only from a corner handle. So I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. I want it a little bit smaller than this flower right here, but a little bit bigger than this flower. So click inside to move it over and then click and drag outside the bounding box to rotate it if you want to do that. And that's what I'll do here. And we'll place it right up there so we have this nice triangle of flowers there. And then click on the green check mark to commit the change. I want my cutout tulip to appear to be behind this larger red tulip. So I want to get rid of this part right here so that it looks like it's behind it. So to do that, click on the hide button and you'll want to adjust your brush. I'm going to make mine as hard as it can be, the opacity all the way up to the top. And then you can adjust the size here or you can use the right or left bracket keys. And then click and drag to brush away that area. And if you go just a little bit too far, you can always click on Reveal and do that. But you have to be careful because you'll reveal some other part of the photo, not just the cutout. So I'm going to press Ctrl Z in Windows or Command Z on a Mac to undo that and make my brush smaller so that I can just reveal it right here. And you can also click and Shift click to make a line right there. I'm going to add this in a little bit over there, go back to hide and press click there and shift click there to make a line. So now I also want to hide this area. I'll make my brush a little bit bigger and just hide that so it looks like it's behind this, uh, this leaf right here. And that looks pretty good. Looks like there's one little spot that I want to reveal. There, I'm being kind of picky here, but I can zoom in even closer and just click and shift click and shift click. And here, I'm going to click on hide and click and shift click. So let's go back to full size. And now it looks like my tulip is behind this other flower. When you're satisfied, click the next button. And the last step in Photo Merge Compose is to use Auto Match Color Tone to help you match color between two photos that may have different lighting and color. Now these two photos um, have the same lighting, so I don't have to worry about that. And it's a great idea with photos that don't match quite as well, but as of this recording, there is a problem with it. In my experience, and I've tried several experiments, clicking this button or moving any of these sliders will cause your cutout to degrade and pixelate your image. So I hope Adobe is able to fix this problem before it ships, but you might want to check it to make sure. Just get the zoom tool and double click to zoom in to 100% or actually double click on the zoom tool to zoom in and then move down. And you can try auto match color tone and see if it degrades the image or not. And if it doesn't, great, then they got it fixed. But as of this recording, it is still degrading the image. Even with that, uh, this is an amazing tool. I'm going to click done and let's take a look at the photo. So here is my new photo right here. And notice that it has another layer here and it has a mask on it. So if you're familiar with using masks, you can click on the mask icon and continue to work with it if you want. If I hide this layer, this is my original image and this is the new cutout that was put on it. So it's really a great tool. This is Linda Satgast with Digital Scrapper.